right, bro. Now those two quotes may not be attributed to the people they were up on the screen with, but uh, they are very valid. And uh, this video may be one of the most influential of your life in terms of getting you out of the circle of just fucking doing the same things and expecting different results. Because even if it wasn't my boy Albert Einstein who said that, and even if it wasn't, uh, you know, the other guy who said the other thing, the quote holds true. So many, so many people, even if they, even if they literally have heard the quote before, they just don't practice it, they, they don't, they don't put it into practice, they don't fucking, they don't use it, whatever. And that results in them not getting any results, so pay attention, we're gonna go over four main areas of where you might be spinning your wheels, you're not getting any better, even though you think you're putting in the work, this is four areas of opportunity for most people, it's gonna be, you know what, I won't tell you bro, fucking watch the video and you'll find out, wonderful, let's get into it. Number one is in the gym, a lot of people have been going to the gym for a fairly, fairly, fairly decent amount of time. And they just are not seeing the results that they think they should be. Now, a lot of that is just patience. But if you've genuinely been patient for a number of months and you're just not seeing any tangible results, either strength-wise or looks-wise, it comes down to these two things, mainly. Number one is the one I've been guilty of and have only stopped doing recently. And, you know, <laughs> I'm gonna get back to because it's the summer and I want to try out something fun, bro. It's program hopping, my guy. It's the shiny object syndrome of thinking, oh wow, berserk method, let's go. Oh wow, new natural hypertrophy program. Oh wow, this looks cool. But Hamza said you should do push pull legs. Let's do this shit, bro. Oh, Peter Kacharian upload said the antagonist training is the best. Or this five day mass gain split. There are so many, so many programs out there. In reality, they're not all that much different from each other, right? You can manipulate the rep ranges, what exercise you do, whatever. But you're still training. And what you do when you switch programs all the time is it's basically you're not allowing yourself to make progress on one of them because you're constantly switching it up. So you're essentially starting from zero over and over again, even though you spent, even though if you spend the same amount of time in one program, you would be making a lot more results. So this leads into how putting your all into a bad program you're going to get way better results than putting only a few weeks half-assed effort on the best program, right? You can pay Paris Butler himself to make you a custom uh, upper, lower, whatever template, right? Super sets city, cluster sets, whatever the fuck, advanced technique. The best exercises for your leverages. If you just spend like a few weeks on that and then fucking hop off, whatever, and keep doing that... Even if the programs are good that you're hopping around in, you're not going to make as much progress as some guy who listened to fucking Mark Marcus Aurelius Ripito himself. Finish your set. We squat for three sets of five across with the same weight. Now, I'm not saying everyone should do starting strength plus go mad, whatever the fuck that, like, the results of that are. All I'm saying is that if someone genuinely does commit to that, five pounds to the bar every every workout, whatever... Or if someone commits to something on the other side, the Arnold split, six day training system, whatever. Nine is a pump. If someone commits to one of those systems, they're gonna get way better results than you who's fucking just watching these videos of these guys like putting in the work and they find something cool because they put in the work and they share it with you. And you're like, oh, okay, let me try this new thing. It's good to try new things, but like, bro, lay off the fucking program hopping, please. Lay off the... Start taking your Adderall, because you, you have lifting ADHD at this point, my guy. So yeah, stick to one program, do your research, but like, keep it limited. Don't just constantly watch new videos, whatever the fuck, if you're not even going to apply anything, right? You can watch kind of long-form videos about just gen general knowledge and not apply it. That doesn't harm you. But if you just are intaking all of this new fitness information, it's going to make you want to switch a program... And it's not going to benefit you in the long term. Pick one, stick with it, see the results, epic. Now, once you found the program to not program hop off of, you're probably going to be avoiding what's hard still. A lot of people say that they're, like, chasing the pump. Whatever that means, right? A pump is great. Pumps are wonderful. I love pumps. I'm coming day and night, Arnold Schwarzenegger said. But when most people say 
chasing the pump. It's just, like, they're communicating in the language of pussy for, uh, not training hard, right? Because when people say chasing the pump, they just mean high reps, uh, not going to failure, whatever. The whole reason they say they're chasing the pump is because they aren't doing, like, heavy sets of squats to failure, or whatever the fuck, or, like, rowing to failure. Because these things are hard, these things are painful, and you've you'll find that the best pumps you'll get are the ones when you actually train hard to get it, my guy. So essentially, when someone's just going through the motions, chasing the pump, whatever, not only are they not training effectively, they're not even getting that good of a pump. If you want the best, like, skin splitting, whatever the fuck pump of your life, like, it hurts to hold, the, like, for that last few seconds of the set, the last few reps, when you have to fucking squeeze through whatever, the reps are slowing down. But you want to get the pump, so fucking go for that, my guy. Don't just stop, like, ten reps away from failure, just because just you're like, yeah, I'm getting the blood into the muscle. Like, kill yourself, my guy. Young man. Kill yourself. Kill yourself. You're not even going to get the best pump, even though that's what you say, paradoxically. It's just an excuse to not train hard. There's a similar sentiment with the, yeah, I just do 3 RIR, bro. I just do the RPE7. Whatever, when you don't even know what RPE7 is, my guy, you've never taken a single set to failure. How the fuck are you going to gauge an RPE7? Just think about that real quick. So, find out what actual failure feels like. Don't bo <laughs> don't bullshit yourself. And don't skip out on exercises that you know you need, but you just don't want to do because they're hard. This is why I put the nothing compares to squats here. If you genuinely do not care about your legs, you don't have to squat. I just think it's cool. I don't care about my leg size that much, but I just want to be able to squat a lot of weight, so I still squat. Wonderful. Cool. That covers the gym. Now in terms of getting bitch- Now in terms of winning the favor of a nice woman, uh, I have fucking zero experience. <laughs> I am in the process of leveling up the skill. Trust me, I am going out there. I am getting my reps in. But I, I cannot help you with any stage past just, like, talk to the- Talk to the girl, bro, and don't be autistic. Because that's the only two barriers that I've managed to break, right? The biggest problem is that you're not talking to anyone. Objectively, take a look at yourself. Because most of the time, your problem isn't even that you get rejected all the time. The problem is that you don't get rejected at all. You also don't get accepted because you don't fucking talk to people. It's very, very simple math. If you talk to zero people... You're gonna have a 0% chance of getting bitches, my guy, that's just how it works. Now once you talk to a few people, one person, at least, hopefully, whatever, keep going. I'm a noob myself, we'll do it together, we'll get there, we're all gonna make it, let's fucking go. Don't stop just because you've talked to one person, and they didn't seem very receptive. Bro, you probably smell like asshole, you probably are, like... You probably have some weird social manners. You probably have, like, some jittery shit that you do with your eye contact and your hands. It's fine. You'll work it out over time. I'm probably very autistic sometimes. I, I don't know if I should tell this story. I'll tell a story later. When a few more people will listen to it. But there is a few funny stories I have of this caliber. So... Just rack up those experiences, and don't overthink it, my guy. We're gonna make it eventually. Just keep putting your reps in. As XUC said, Felix Quebec Lendiel, the famous, famous Fortnite streamer, once said, If you have no things in the hat, how can you expect to be drawn from the hat? You can't. Every day you gotta put your name in it. So, don't overthink it, my guy. There's a simple two-step process. Number one is watch a few videos, so you're not a complete, like, autist, so you know, like, somewhat what to do. But don't just keep watching videos all day, my guy. Go out there. Go out in the real world. Now, don't go out with the intention of just, No, nah, woman, woman spotted, woman, <laughs> woman. Go about your day. Make sure you're actually doing things throughout your day. And if you see a nice girl, whatever, you want to talk to her, fucking do that, my guy with the knowledge that you learned from the videos. And don't have a specific, like, prepared pickup line. If you're seriously trying to use it, like, you can use, like, some complete meme tier, like, troll pickup line, whatever, if you want, but 
it's just gonna be very, very cringe. Kind of autistic if you come over there with a prepared sentence that you have like pre uh, pre programmed into your mind. Like, okay, this is what I'm gonna say to this girl because maybe the situation, maybe it doesn't work. Maybe she won't find it as funny as you did in your head. Just be uh, be able to improvise, my guy. You don't want to say you want you don't like for example you don't want to go over to a girl in a coffee shop and say like fucking uh do you know what time this gym closed? Obviously that's a very extreme example. No one with a IQ above room temperature will do that hopefully. But it needs to be able to adapt to the situation. So just make sure you get those three things down and you're and you'll be fine as long as you actually put yourself out there. Let's get it. Not for your mental health. This is very very crucial. If for nothing else than uh, to keep doing the other things mentioned in this video. Because if you kill yourself, then you actually can't maximize your gains. So you wanna make sure that your mental health is good, so you don't kill yourself, so you can do all the good stuff listed before. The number one thing is to look objectively at your habits. If you feel some like emptiness in your life, and then you can pinpoint it, and you're just like, ah, well I've reached this nihilist enlightenment, uh, the red fog is coming for us all or some shit look objectively at yourself first are you sleeping more than like 30 minutes a night because bro, depression fucks your sleep up so badly like you stay up until 4 a.m playing counter-strike global offensive it's not good it's just very not good get your sleep in order secondly are you eating complete utter dog shit and are you eating enough Take a look at your diet, watch my other videos, and you'll know, like, uh, <laughs> what foods to avoid and what foods you should eat. Number three is water. Are you dehydrated as shit? Do you, like, are your lips actually, like, drier than the Sahara Desert? Because if they are, then it may just be, like, an electrolyte imbalance, my guy. You may just need to hydrate more. Could literally be that simple. Number four is your screen time. Screen time, it's not exactly that, like, if you look at screens for too long, your eyes are gonna fucking shit themselves and die immediately. It's more that, what are you doing on the screen? If you're looking at, like, Twitter videos of, like, beheadings in, in like, the outskirts of Qatar all day, then how do you think your mental health is gonna be like? Because what do you think, like, your brain processes that as? Do you think your brain has evolved to learn that, oh yeah, that's a Twitter video? No. <laughs> it's not gonna end well if that's all you spend your day doing. And conversely, how much time do you spend in nature? Because nature is cool. There are squirrels outside. You can go pet them if they don't have rabies. <clears throat> They're very nice. So is like water and trees and like bushes. You just go spend time in nature, bro. Those are just baseline passive things that any normal human should be doing. Now the active things you can do to chip away at your depression, anxiety, whatever the fuck is meditation and gratitude. Meditation, I know it sounds like the, to some people, it sounds like a really weird thing that like these old Indian people with like really long beards just like cross their legs and do for five days at a time. It's, it's literally just, meditation is just the skill that uh, stops you from having to watch uh, Subway Surfers gameplay in the background of everything, okay? It's a very useful skill to have in the modern day. Because you want your attention to yourself, you want to be able to uh, pay attention to things that you want to. And every company, pretty much every advertisement, whatever the fuck, social media, is trying to steal your attention. So you want that shit all to yourself. So meditate, and you'll get that down. Gratitude journaling helps you be less of a nihilist. Because, um... I'm probably not smart enough to make a video on nihilism, but it sucks ass, pretty much. It doesn't benefit anyone, like, even, even if it's true. Even if, like, the universe is cold and empty and we're small in it, like, what what does that help you with, like, with the life you have, right? <laughs> so gratitude journaling will help you focus on the things that genuinely matter in the here and now. And uh, the things that have mattered to you in the past. Just all the cool things that have happened to you. You're going to be like, oh, yeah, that was nice. That was very cool. And you're not going to have to resort to, ah, sweet human made horrors behind me on my imagination like whatever peter griffin meme that was you're not gonna have to resort to that mindset you can just appreciate things for what they are like a normal person let's get it i think this is the last one last and pretty much least because school school kind of sucks ass i'm not gonna lie 
there are two main aspects of school that you want to at least get a good baseline in. The first one is academics. If you find yourself having dog shit grades, there are three things to look at. Number one is, uh, are you scrolling on TikTok all period? Because if you if you are, I'm not even going to go over this. Go look at the previous things. Get those get those shits in order. Because if you're just looking at TikTok all period, there, there's no fucking wonder why you can't pay attention, my guy. On the other hand, not on the other hand, in the similar branch, are you falling asleep in class? Because if you don't have the other things checked off on the previous slides then there's a good chance that you're not getting enough sleep and you're falling asleep in class. And again, if you are not conscious, how the fuck do you expect to learn, my G? So make sure you're not doing that. Do you leave your work to the last minute? This affects the quality of your work. Basically, whatever project, uh, essay, whatever the fuck you turn in is gonna be pretty bad. It's gonna be, it's gonna be kinda shitty if you leave it all to the last minute and do it in a panicked state, whatever. So you want to do it, you want to do as much of your work as early on as you can. Not only so that you can enjoy your life and not have to worry about these things, but so that the work itself you do in a calm state and it's of a bunch, uh, it's of a lot higher quality. The second aspect of school, and arguably the mo more important one, is a social one. If you find yourself being lonely, oh yeah, side tangent, I, I didn't add this on, but if you have shit friends, just stop being friends with shit friends, find better friends, lol. But that's less of a problem than uh, than people who are just straight up having no friends. Number one to look at, this is gonna like kind of be a sting in the balls for a few people. Are you just objectively weird? Like do you use, <laughs> do you use like gamer terms in an academic setting, in like a social setting? Do you use the term like poggers when something cool happens? And you're like some deformed hunchback, whatever. Are you objectively weird? Take a good look at yourself. Uh, there's a good few things that you can do to stop being weird socially without sacrificing like your individuality. You don't have to conform to the TikTok skater, whatever guy. You don't have to be that guy, but you also, it also really does benefit you to not be weird. You can be yourself without being fucking autistic, let, let's just put it that way. Even if you are autistic, because, like, I know some cool autistic people, bruh. There, there are two that come to mind. They're cool as fuck, they're funny, they have obsessions. But, like, in, in, a, in a cool way, and they don't, like, go around and, like, shit themselves in the middle of class or whatever. They're not weird, is my point. Number one is do you actually try to talk to people? Because if you don't actually try to talk to people, I don't know if anyone has told you this, but you will not have many friends if you do not have, if you do not try to talk to people. It's never too late to start talking about hobbies, interests. Oh, did you guys, how did you do on the test? Oh, you should give me your number and we should fucking, we should work on that. Oh, wow, you play Rust too. <laughs> Let's go play Rust together sometime. And the bottom two things that are really going to help with that. Number one, are you just ugly? Genetically, if you can't really do much about it, if you have some, like, deformity, there are still things I could do, like a skincare routine, hygiene, not smelling like asshole, dressing well, going to the gym. There's always something you can do to not be ugly. Let's put it that way. So just make sure you're trying to do, trying to hit, uh, check off at least a few of those boxes. And number two is are you funny? Because if you're genuinely funny, then that's a really great asset. But a lot of guys, I don't know what I don't know what it is. Maybe they're just genuinely boring as fuck. Maybe it's they're insecure and they're like, "Oh no, I can't be funny." But there are a lot of like really unfunny people in this world. Don't be one of them. Is my point. Be funny. So with those things in mind, even if you only uh like contribute to upgrading one of these four one of these four things one of these four slides i guarantee you will become less insane because you're actually going to be making positive changes with measurable results and your life will actually get better have a good night bro